Hey guys, my name is Jen Wagner and this is my very first video blog. I'm very excited. Today I'm going to be talking about a few of my favorite hand lettering tools. What I really want this blog or this channel to become is just a good resource for you guys wanting to learn hand lettering and I'll just teach you a little bit at a time and feel free to ask questions in the comments section and I'll try to address those questions with the following videos and yeah we'll keep it going that way so I'm gonna start introducing my all-time favorite all-time cheap um, it's just an artist loft three zero paintbrush it comes in this super cheap set from Michaels. It's a great, great, great beginner set. Um, because it has a few different sizes, it'll kind of give you a feel for, for what those sizes do as far as the letters go, because they each are a little bit different. And my favorite is the 3-0, but as you get more accustomed to using them, you can begin to invest in better brushes. So this is just a really great starter pack. I still use these. I just buy new ones every once in a while. Um, but yeah, so this is the one that I use most of the time. Next is my trusty Micron 03 ink pen. This is really, really great for cards. I use this for the fake calligraphy technique that we'll explore a little bit in later videos. I'll show you a little bit of it in a second. But that one's great. It's got really, really beautiful dark lines. Um, it's waterproof, and it's pr it's generally erase proof. You need to let it dry for a little bit, but for the most part, you can sketch out your letters in pencil, go over them with a micron, and then erase back over any graphite that you missed, and it won't smudge or anything. So that's great. And then lastly is this guy. This is a... Tombow, and I might butcher this, a Tombow Fudenosuke? Fudenosuke. Well, wow. I tried. A uh, soft brush tip. Looks kind of like that. Oh, there we go. And I really, really love this for cards as well. Um, I even use it when I journal to kind of create headings, some, sometimes to take notes. Um, but that's a really great brush or brush pen. So what's cool about these brush pens too is that they are kind of a good mix between your your paintbrush and your pen. Um, and so you get that movement of a brush with the ink of a pen and that's really nice. So I'm going to show you right now how this works. We'll work backwards. So I'm going to start with the Tombow and then we'll move to the Micron and then to the brush. So I'm going to start with my Tombow brush. I'm just going to write a simple phrase, beautiful, and you, you'll be able to see the tip kind of bend as I push down. And so you can create these really cool contrasting lines by simply changing the pressure of your brush. So I'm pushing down and then I pull up push down, pull up. And what's great about brush pens is it gives you that consistent ink color, whereas watercolor is a little bit more inconsistent. So this, that's the Tombow. The Micron is great for your fake calligraphy style. You can even use your own handwriting for this. Like this is my normal handwriting. So what I'll do from here is just thicken each downstroke to make it look like I used a brush. And again, this pen is awesome because you can use pencil underneath it and erase it without it smudging. It's 
waterproof, so you can use it with watercolor. It's a great brush, or a great, a great pen. And lastly, is my brush. I like the longer, t um, the longer hair on this one. <laughs> kind of gives you the option to get a little bit more loopy. I found that the longer the brush is, the bigger your loops can get. The downside of using a brush is it takes a bit longer. You have less consistency in your color, which I actually like, but that may change depending on the project you're doing. You always want to adjust the tools you use based on the context of your project. There we go.